Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you guys my scrap room because I've made a number of changes since my last video. Um, this is the area adjacent to my scrapping section. It's kind of a big L-shaped room and my scrap room is in the L part that you actually can't see from here. My basement is unfinished. You can see the ceilings are unfinished and the floors are sort of um, semi-finished. Um, but I went ahead and put up curtains because I was just getting kind of tired of um, the bare gyp rock and we're going to be finishing it off this fall, but in the meantime, I just went out and bought some curtains because I just wanted to be able to... Firstly, I lose a lot of light through those windows when I'm scrapping at night. Um, and it's a little creepy being down here with the windows bare at night. So um, I really wanted some curtains and I've kind of decorated that area into a little sitting area. And um, usually there's only one table here, but I'm going to have my first Stampin' Up! workshop tonight. So I, we have a spare banquet table that I set, that I can set up in this space for um, Stampin' Up! workshop. So that's why I have, that's why I'm starting here, just to kind of show that I have space for Stampin' Up! workshops, which I'm really excited about. Um, I don't know how many I'm going to have because I'm not sure. Um, I'm just a hobby demo, so I'm not, you know, going to be doing lots of clubs and workshops and stuff, but I'll probably do a few. And this is all of my kids' craft stuff, mostly all craft stuff. So I have them all in this, in these Sterlite um, bins because I do share this space with my kids. So it's all sort of organized, mostly organized, and my kids do a pretty good job of putting things away when they're done. Um, and then there's just kind of like toys here and um, then there's some, that's all my Stampin' Up! stuff there. So we kind of share the space and it, there's lots more play space right here when this second table isn't up. That table is usually pushed into the wall and that becomes the kids' craft table. Um, and then there's a huge amount of floor space here for the kids to pull out their Barbies and whatnot. So. Um, we do a pretty good job of sharing the space. And then over here, this is our just an old futon that Scott's sister gave us. Um, and so I've got this set up here, and this is an old coffee table from our old house. And that's an office, that's a lamp from my old office. And we set up a TV and a Blu-ray player down here so that I can, that TV actually kind of swings out and tilts so that I can see it from my scrap room um, when I'm scrapping. And then it kind of goes back into the wall when, it, when I'm not using it like I am right now. Um, and I just keep DVDs in that little box right there. So it's kind of nice to have a little sitting area right next to my scrap room. Um, and I'm just gonna show you my scrap room from afar. Here it is. Um, I put a few plants in here and just kind of trying to warm it up and make it look a little bit less basementy, um, despite the fact that it's unfinished. Um, so that's my scrap room. The layout of it hasn't changed, but I've changed where I keep stuff. And so I thought I'd do a quick update for you guys. Actually, you know what? It's very unlikely to be quick. So, um, yeah. <laughs> get yourselves comfortable or if you don't want to see a really long scrap room video then you know move on to the next one in your playlist. Um, so the first thing that's different in here is that I have my big shot out on my table. Um, I keep it out and I've, I've changed my cuddle bug for a big shot. I sold my cuddle bug and um, on my first Stampin' Up! order as a demonstrator, I bought the big shot, and so I got a, a discount. You get a discount on your first on your first um, order, so I got a I got a discount on that, more of a discount than normal. Um, and so now I keep mostly die cutting stuff in here. In these, there used to be other stuff in there. So I have um, like the the spacers and cutting mats for the long strips. And then in here, ooh, I have a massive, as you can tell. I don't have a ton of um, die cutting supplies, but I do have a few things I love. This beautiful butterflies, beautiful wings, I think it's called, embosslet. And I got the tags embosslet. And I've always had this strip, which I use for mini albums. Um, it's Wingo Dingo um, font. And it's, it's just kind of fun. 
I really like it. I use it a lot on mini albums because it's a it's a perfect tiny font. So and then I have a couple of Cuddlebug um, dies back there that I use sometimes as well. And then I keep all of my Cuddlebug embossing folders in here. And then in here I have just kind of like random Big Shot stuff. I used to have all my Big Shot dies in there, but once I got the Milk Carton die, which is my latest addition, um, they're kind of boring to look at because they're just, you know, flat. But anyways, um, now I have, this is my huge collection of Sizzix dies, um, but I do have too many to fit in one of those baskets now, so I'm just putting it in here for now underneath. And then of course I have my um, Grand Caliber, which I still use for anything big um, and for all of my nestabilities. Um, in here I have adhesives, mostly kind of big bul bulky adhesive things that don't um, fit anywhere else. So my Xyron mostly and some spray adhesives. Right, I did that already. Um, I still keep my cutter here and my, my um, scoring thing there. I still keep my nestabilities in here on these sheets and I don't really have a ton of sets of nestabilities so I can just kind of flip through to try to find the one that I want. So I just keep them on these loose cardboard sheets that have, um, what they are is they're cardboard with these pieces of magnet attached to them to make them, to make the nestability stick to them. And this is the packaging for the magnets. I bought these at Walmart um, marked down really, really low. There's only two sheets in a package, but I think they were only 50 cents a, sh a package, so I got them. I still keep my embellishments in here in these um, containers that I bought some beads in a long time ago. Um, and it's working for me for now. I keep kind of like metals in here and then bright colors and bling and stuff in there. Um, and then st stuff that I don't fit in this that I just haven't unpackaged yet or whatever goes back there. And then this is just kind of like scraps and stuff. I have another extra little paper trimmer that I keep in here. Um, in there I keep mostly like cleaning supplies like rags and paper towel and um, what's that stuff called? Tin foil and I also keep my cuddle bug dies in this um, binder. I don't think I've shown this before. It's my cuddle bug binder. Um, oops, it's zippered up a little bit. So this um, keeps all of my cuddle bug folders in kind of like everything all neat and then these are the little square dies Then these are the die strips. I use this alphabet font a lot. This is called the Olivia font and I really like it. Um, and then there's just some extra sheets here. Oh yeah. And then I have another alphabet die that I don't really use very much. And that's about all I have in here. So not a whole lot. And I'm not going to put that away while you guys are on the video. Okay. I keep my Making Memories carousel right here. It has most of my um, go-to tools. Oh dear. Can you hear that? The dog chooses now to play with his antler on the... He has one of those antlers. It's some environmentally friendly... Hang on. what are you doing with that noisy antler on the floor when I'm making a video? Huh? What are you doing? Go play with something quiet. Go play with a stuffy. Isn't he adorable? I had to show my dog. Everybody shows their dogs in their videos, so I had to show my dog. Okay. Um... Yeah, so... Th there he goes again. So sorry, it's gonna be noisy. Um, yeah, so I just keep my tools here. These are my go-to tools that I reach for all the time. Um, I have my guillotine paper cutter, which I use whenever I'm making multiples of something, um, right there. It's got that really cool, that black thing right there is for kind of sizing. So you can decide where to put your paper and then cut a whole bunch the same size. Um, this is all jewelry making and Sculpey clay and that sort of stuff. Um, I keep my embossing and, well, mostly embossing, but I also have, I just got Dazzling Diamonds. I am not a glitter person, um, but I love this stuff. This is awesome. Um, so I just put it in this because it was making a huge mess on my 
um, on my, uh, whatever this thing is called, this, um, powder pal or whatever it's called, um, it's just making a mess. It's hard to get the glitter off of it. So I decided to just put glitter like I do with, um, I do that with clear embossing powder, white embossing powder, black embossing powder, and I also keep white and black UD in the back. Um, and that's just because I use those so much that it didn't make sense for me to be always pulling this out and cleaning it. Um, so yeah, so, but whenever I use like my colored embossing powders, I just use them with that. Um, in here I have my, um, this is new of course because of Stampin' Up. Um, this is what every, lots of people do. I saw this on lots of different people's um, YouTube videos that when they use their sponges for different inks, they just kind of put a tag on it like that. I thought that was a really cool idea. So I obviously don't have a ton of them, but they're in there. And then this is my other, like mostly distress ink and that sort of stuff. All my other sponges are right below it. Um, these are my markers. They used to be spread across two and now they're all in one. Um, and this is just kind of like random rub-ons for cards and stuff. I keep tags and envelopes and stuff like that in here. Um, and it's just kind of like messy. I don't really clean it very much. This is empty. This is where I keep um, extra glue sticks. This is removable adhesive. Um, my staplers and my tiny attacher and just extra stuff and score tape and extra adhesive that don't really fit very nicely in this. I keep my reinkers and stuff like that in here. I have an extra mini mister in there too. Um, let's see. I keep a couple of templates that I use a lot up here along with my glue gun and my heat gun. My heat gun is always plugged in. My glue gun obviously isn't always, but I keep um, a little extension cord here so that I can quickly and easily plug in my glue gun without having to get down on my hands and knees and try to plug it in under the table because that's a pain. Um, I have my making memories with cute little things from my daughters for Mother's Day. Um, my Making Memories Embellishment Center is right there, and it has all the same stuff that it ever had. Um, I keep all my Distress Inks right there, and I have a great assortment. I got some new ones not too long ago, so I'm really happy with the Distress Inks that I have. I don't think that I need any more right in the, in the immediate future. I keep my stickles upside down in those watch cases, and I have a stickles reference sheet that I keep right over here, some, yeah, right there so I can have a look at what color I want. Um, I'm keeping my Stampin' Up! embellishments, most of which I just got off the clearance rack. They're just cheapy things that I have for making cards. Um, I'm keeping them right there for now. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And then this is all my mists. They're all kind of jammed into two um, things now. They used to be spread out across them all, but that's fine. I can still look for the ones that I need. I don't need them all out perfectly. Um, and there's just other miscellaneous like smooch inks and paint dabbers and um, crackle paint and distress stickles and all kinds of stuff. So that's where all my kind of mix, like my messy stuff is. I keep my um, Stampin' Up! inks in. This is what, this is the drawer that belongs there. Um, I just put it on its side, see? I just put it on its side and used it as a little shelf. So in that I keep my brights and Subtles um, color collections for my Stampin' Up! ink and I also keep my markers right there because there was enough space. Um, those are my watercolor pencils from Stampin' Up! I've had those forever. Those were my first Stampin' Up! thing I ever had. Um, and then I keep my neutral inks right there and my in-color inks right there and those I don't have the regals so I got the I got the stamp, the little spot ones for the regals. Anyways, um, so that's kind of my Stampin' Up! stuff. That's the stuff I stamp with the most when I'm making cards and stuff. And even for scrapbooking, I'm starting to use it a lot. These are my, oh, it's dark over here. I'm gonna turn on a light. This is where I store my stamps. I have all of my non-Stampin' Up! stamps are taken out of the package and I store them in clear CD cases. And I really like that because I can get at them really easily. I just pull it out, open it up, and I can just grab the stamp that I need and put it on the block and use it. Um, I really like that, that way of keeping clear stamps. And um, then I just keep them all cataloged 
here. And it tells me which case it's in so I can then go find the case. So that's what I do with my clear stamps. And then these are my Stampin' Up stamps. Most of my Stampin' Up stamps are clear mount. Um, but I do like the wood mount too, so I'll probably always have a mix. There are my wood mount ones. Um, and then I have a color wheel handle thingy. I only have one color wheel, so that's convenient. Um, and then this is where I keep my personalized stamp. This is created by Tracy. And I got, I got this stamp um, from, it's from, it's, I got it on Etsy. I can't remember the name of the shop, but this is the cutest one. I got two of them. I got that one that says created by Tracy. And then I got this one that says, I'll show you the stamped image. It says, if you had any idea how hard I worked on this handmade card and how late I was up last night making it, you would never, ever throw it away. <laughs> Tracy. So I thought that was cute. And then this is my um, personalized stamp that I've had forever. It has my first and last name on it. So there's that. So I'm recovering from a cold, if you couldn't tell. Keep my um, Big Shot stuffed in that little corner there. Um, this is just kind of a little basket of little extra things that I've got. Like I, I was making some a card the other night, and this was a dud, but I thought, well, I might, I might use it for something. And little like when I punch extras of things, um, I just hang on to them because I might, I might use them for something later on. And then these were some stamps I was just playing with, and I didn't want to throw them away, and just extra things that I've that I've embossed and not used yet. Um, so I just toss things in there, and then every once in a while I'll go through it and either use it or get rid of it, give it to the kids. Um, those are my Stampin' Up! punches. I decided to just kind of keep them together just so that I can, I don't know, I don't know why. I guess my racks were getting kind of full. And so I, once I pulled off the Stampin' Up! ones, I had room to kind of space them out and I had everything fit. So um, those are my non-Stampin' Up! punches. And the other thing I did was I've put the... Um, inches on them. That one's funny, I have, it's it's one and seven, seven sixteenths, but I put that it's approximately one and three eighths just because that's a con that's a Stampin' Up! size one and sometimes I'm looking for that and I want to remind myself that that's pretty close because I don't have that one. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, right, this is my, I keep my iPad on that when I have it down here. Um, and then I just shove, this is the little um, pot that I keep my Cricut cartridge books in. Um, and then I keep my cameras and stuff there when I'm not using them. And of course lollipops, very important. And some more stamped images that I made a long time ago that I haven't put on cards yet. There's my Cricut. And my Gypsy. And that's just a basket of that I put whenever I have something that's sort of like a long-term project. This is this silly mini album. I've been making this forever. Sophie's party was in January and I don't like this mini album so I can't make myself finish it because I'm not liking how it's turning out. So I just need to sit down and finish it someday so I can get this silly basket off my table because it takes up a lot of space. Um, and so I always force myself to finish one big project before I start another one. So like I have a few other projects that I want to start but because that basket is full I can't start them yet so that kind of gives me a bit of motivation in theory it's obviously not it's obviously not working very well but in theory that gives me motivation to finish things up because I only have one basket to put unfinished projects in um yeah so what's up here I moved my art supplies like my Adirondack mists and mixed media stuff I put it all there um, and then this is my alphabet center so I have my small alpha stickers in this basket and I like just kind of flipping through it I, I prefer this system over having them in drawers or in on my clip it up or anything I just kind of like having them in a basket that I can flip through and then these are my stickers and other letter stickers yes I'm a little bit obsessed with stickers with letter stickers anyways um, so those are my bigger letter stickers. And this is my bucket of bling. I don't use a ton of bling, but I do have kind of an assortment of little blingy things in here. Um, Cricut little things, some sewing stuff back there, some flosses in there. Um, these are my, uh, this is one of those hardware 
storage unit thingies that my husband put on the wall for me and I've got different letter stickers. This is that Olivia font that I showed you on my cuddle bug. So I just keep, this is just a mishmash. These are all my R's that I have. Um, so if I need to spell something in chipboard letters, I'll just pull out all the boxes for the, for the phrase and um, take a look at what I've got. And then I just keep a couple of Halloween projects up there and that's mostly decorative stuff. Um, yeah, those are some glitzy blooms that I've got, that I've made, that are, I haven't sold yet. Um, and my bind it all. 20 minutes already, holy moly. Okay. But now what I've done is I put this hanging basket right here on this shelf. And I've got all of my um, stamps. All of my letter stamps are in here. And I keep them mostly in their original packaging and stuff. So, so yeah, these are all the letter stamps that I've got, mostly in the original packaging. So what else? Um, back to my kind of sitting area. I have um, this under the table thing that I use mostly for art projects and stuff. I don't have any art projects on the go, so it's mostly empty. I keep a couple of extra templates in there. And then just like stuff I'm hanging on to that I might use on a canvas or something. And then I keep extra baby wipes inside of that Dora stool right there and then my recycling. And then that's my little half size sewing machine that I got from Sears. I just keep my sewing machine in the original box that it came in. This is just my little half size sewing machine. And it's super light and it pops right out really easily. And I throw it up here when I'm ready to use it. Oh, except it's backwards right now. So I throw it up here when I want to use it. And then what I do is I just keep under here the pedal and the and the power cord already plugged in. So when I want to use it, I just have to pull these things. I just have to pull these things and plug them in up here and it's ready to go. So it's really, really easy to set up. And then in this, I actually, this is funny, I keep vintage books over there that my mother-in-law gave me. Um, that I tear pages out of and then this actually I'm running out of room So I had to put this in in a way that I can't pull out the drawers But it's pretty light so when I need to get at it I keep extra ribbon like I stocked up on some ribbon that was on the clearance rack at Stampin Up and some extra buttons and stuff um, And then I keep like mini album Hardware and pages and stuff in that and the same in back down there so because I don't use that very often, I just kind of keep it shoved in there. That way somebody can sit here and there can be a chair and there's room for their legs. The ever important dehumidifier, because this is a basement, so I need to have that running pretty much constantly. I turned this off about five minutes ago and the humidity, well, 20 minutes ago now, um, and the humidity went from 40 to 50% in 20 minutes. And by the time I'm done this, I'm sure it'll be in the 60s. So I keep my, all of my flattish embellishments on my, on my clip it up. That would be stickers, anything like, well, mostly stickers and anything flat, like pieces of cardstock that are die cut and um, rub-ons and some chipboard and that sort of thing are all kept on that. And I have it just kind of organized into like phrases, miscellaneous, seasonal themes. I have some of it arranged by color, um, multicolor and black and white. And then this is kind of like all across the color spectrum and that sort of thing. And I have the bottom and top organized the same categories. It's just, these are the big stuff and this is the little stuff. So I really like that for um, keeping all my packages of stuff so that I remember to use it. I have some non-Stampin' Up! wood mounted stamps up there. I don't have a ton of them. That basket has some odds and ends in it that I could grow into that basket. This is my ribbon center that now that I make more cards, I've needed to kind of think more about how I store my ribbon. So I put the dowel back on that unit that I used to have the dowel off of. That unit's actually upside down. Um, and I use it as a tabletop unit instead of uh, hanging it on the walls it's supposed to be. Um, so let's go. I have uh, some duct tape and weird tapey things up there. And then any ribbon that will fit on this wide dowel is here. And every, any ribbon that doesn't fit on that wide dowel is in this because this has a really thin metal dowel inside of it. So that's where I keep those ribbons. This is more kind of, um, oops. 
uh, tapes and stuff like that and more that's paper tape and this is that really skinny ribbon that I like to use when I make banners I love that it's three millimeter ribbon I think and I just dye it whatever color I need it to be usually not white I usually make it off-white um, and then I have some strings and some be some like strands of beads and stuff and then this is all stampin up strings and threads and stuff Baker's twine and I keep a measuring thing here and I keep my sharp scissors and I just tie a ribbon on it just to remind myself not to use paper with those cause to keep them nice and sharp and then this is my makeshift Stampin' Up! ribbon storage <laughs> unit what it is is it's the dowel that white thing is the dowel from come with me now take it easy close your eyes if you're easily motion sick from my making memories um, unit on the bottom two there's a spot for a dowel for you to hang ribbon I don't hang ribbon from it so I've taken that dowel and I've stuck it into this is a lamp base for these lamps I have three of these lamps in my office in my scrap room and they had the option of having that big heavy base or that clamp all three of them have the clamp so I have three bases and all that I did was I just kind of hang on the base has like a little screw in it I'm not you're not gonna be able to see that uh, there now you can see it a little bit maybe there see that that just holds the dowel in place and voila I have a place to store my Stampin' Up! ribbon separate from everything else. So I thought that was kind of cool. So, because I was running out of places to keep my Stampin' Up! ribbon. There's my ribbon scraps way up there. Um, and then I have more ribbon, just loose ribbon that's not on the, on the, da on the um, spools. I keep on rings right there and it's divided by color, like according to the color spectrum. And then that's just all neutrals and weird things. Um, so here's my paper and let's start with Stampin' Up! because I've had to kind of change my paper around. I was always keeping my paper with Stampin' Up! stuff separate and I was storing it by color family with the neutrals there, the brights, the subtles, and the regals. Um, so I, I'm still doing that and it's still working for me. Um, I keep full sheets or fullish sheets, like if there's one punch out of a sheet I still keep it there. Um, but that's mostly full sheets. I keep both 12 by 12 and 8.5 by 11 together as you can see. And then this one is in colors. It's labeled with last year's in colors, but those are this year's in colors. I keep my Whisper White and Vanilla here just because I have the space to do that. And then here's where I'm going to keep my stacks. Right now I only have one, but I love this paper. These pattern stacks. I have the Brights one, but there's one for each color family. So I want to get more of those, so I'm going to keep them there. And then these are projects. Like this is a Stampin' um, scrapbooking kit that I've got. And this is a project that I'm working on from Stampin' Up! as well. Then I keep my designer series paper in this cropper hopper. And I just keep them kind of like... What I do is... Hang on, let me see if I can show you. What I do is when I... So this is one color collection and then there's the label for it and then what I do is I just cut out the color family from the catalog. I print up the PDF on white paper and I just glue this on here because this doesn't tell me what colors match this paper and I like that Stampin' Up! matches all of their stuff so why not benefit from it by having the colors right at your fingertips. So this tells me that it coordinates with um, Early Espresso, Lucky Limeade, Calypso Cor Coral, Whisper White, and Wisteria Wonder. So that way I know which colors of cardstock I need to coordinate with these. Because some of their colors are really similar, especially I find their greens are hard to tell the difference between. Um, so every color collection is like that. I have um, the, the thing from the catalog cut out and, and taped or stapled onto the back of it and then any scraps that I have I just keep in these these are actually creative memories um, little folders that you can kind of slide the extras into um, and I just keep all of my scraps in the back there we go and then this little kind of pull out drawer system is where I keep my Stampin' Up! scrap cardstock so 
All of my neutral scraps are in here. All of my bright scraps are in here and so on all the way up to the in colors. And then I keep, um, I was keeping pattern paper scraps in here, but I'm gonna start, I have to put these into those folders. Then I'll have a free drawer, hooray. Um, so that's my Stampin' Up! paper, and then all my other paper is kind of stored as it always was in stacks. I keep all my stacks on these horizontal shelves, and it's not really organized by anything. It's just kind of where it fits. And then I keep my loose paper, or my paper collections, on these vertical, and I find I like to browse my paper this way. Like, I like to kind of thumb through it and say, oh yeah, I like that one, and pull that one out and, and use it for something. So I really like them stored um, on these cropper hopper things sideways. Let me get one so I can show you what I mean. So these are these folders that come inside of the cropper hopper over there. So my cropper hopper is empty, but these are the folders, and so I store them on their sides so that I can... What is that telling me? Okay, my camera is saying something, but I don't know what it means, so I'm going to ignore it. Hopefully this video turns out okay. So, exam for example, these are all my Making Memories paper collections. They're very old, and they're all right there. So I can just kind of thumb through it and, and pick out a paper that me catches my eye. Um, and then because it's Making Memories, I just have this stack here as well, even though it's not um, loose paper. And then this is my... Oh, this is, a, this is paper that I haven't sorted through yet, so we won't look at that. Um, and then this one has more paper I haven't sorted through yet, so we won't look at that one either. <laughs> um, this one is my basic gray, so it has all of my, my Olivia collection and some of the origins and basics and that sort of, I love basic gray. Um, and then I have a basic gray stack right next to it. So again, if I have a stack that goes here, I'll put it here. And then just some extra things that I have. Oh yeah, so these are papers that I bought. I didn't buy a whole collection of, and so I don't, I don't want to lose them in with my other papers because these all go together. So again, I took some of those Creative Memories um, folders. This is what it looks like, the whole thing. Um, and I just stick my paper in there, and then there's a, there's a pocket in the front that you can put, like here I have the rub-ons, but I can also put any scraps that go with this collection in there. And I've done the same with my 100 Days of Summer collection, just so that I have it all together. Um, and I can just pull the whole thing out and bring it over to my craft room, to my craft table, and start working on it. So sorry, this is a bumpy picture. This is going to be a bumpy video. Sorry about that. I'm just going to leave that out because I can't get it in right now. That's American Crafts cardstock, which I also love almost as much as I love Stampin' Up! cardstock. Um, and then these are just kind of random 6x6 um, six six and 8x8 eight eight, um, paper stacks that I have. And then this is old retired Stampin' Up! cardstock that I'd like to use up because I love it because it's so it's such good quality. Um, but I don't, I don't have anything to use those colors on, so whenever I have something that I just need, like something solid, but I don't care what color it is, I'll pick those. And then that's um, crappy cardstock and more crappy cardstock. I use those for my Cricut. They cut really easily and well, but and they're solid core, but they're really flimsy and you couldn't use them for anything like a card or anything. Um, but they're they're fine for using with your Cricut for layering and stuff. And then this is, um, I have to just get rid of this. I never use these. You know what, if somebody wants these, why don't you message me? Because I have metallics, almost an entire stack of metallic die cuts with a view. I had an idea of a project I wanted to do with these and it just didn't work out. And so I have a whole stack of this that I never use and I just need to get it off of my off of my shelf. And then I got this glitter cardstock also by die cuts with a view and I cut some of it up but I really I never use this. So if anybody wants these, why don't you leave me a message and um and yeah, if more than one person wants it, I'll just randomly draw. But you know, if if you if you want me to send you these, just just leave me a message, and I'll be happy to send those off to you so that I can get them off my shelf, and maybe put something else there. Um, 
Yeah, so this is paper, special paper for using with Copic markers. I have two different brands for some crazy reason. I forgot I ordered some, so I ordered more. Um, these are six by six stacks, and these are matte stacks, and that's fabric. Uh, down here I have idea books. I keep all of my paints and kind of like mixed media stuff in here. So these are paints, and then I have like stuff that goes along with paints. And then I have like weird, like just stuff, mostly garbagey stuff that I just use for mixed media and for art journaling and stuff. And then I have, um, this is a mishmash. That's, that's my art journal right there, which I don't, I don't really show my art journal cause it's kind of, I don't know. I just don't show it. And then there's just like weird papers there. And then I, this is my flower drawer. I don't really use many flowers, but I do have a flower drawer. Um, cause I like them. I just don't use them very much. These are what I usually use, is these white Primas, and I just miss them, the color that I want them to be. Um, I keep my non-Stampin' Up! cardstock, or my non-Stampin' Up! scraps, not just cardstock, but pattern paper too. I keep it sorted by color, by dominant color, right? So when I pull open this blue, there might be some non-blue, like see that has more than just blue in it, but it's mostly blue, so this is, so that's where I go for my scraps, and where was I? Buttons. Non-Stampin' Up! buttons are there. Um, this is, oh my god, what is this? This is a bunch of packages of stuff I got for really cheap off of um, one of those steel, daily deal websites that would send you like 12 packages for the price of three or something like that. Um, so I have a bunch of these that I just bought for really cheap and I thought I'd use it for making cards with the kids and stuff. So whenever the kids have a birthday party, they just come down here and they pick out a couple of stickers and they make their own little card for their friend. And then specialty paper, what's in here? Um, craft plastic, I've got some tracing paper and cardstock and stuff like that. These are kits of stuff that all goes together. So if I have, I don't do this very often, but if I have the paper and the stickers and the buttons and everything that all kind of matches one another, instead of breaking up all that stuff, I'll just put it in one of these bags and shove it in this drawer. So I have a basic gray set and I have a couple Cosmo Cricut sets like that. But I don't usually do that. This is just overflow cards. These are cards that I have made. I haven't given away yet. This is my most recent card. I really like this one. Hello. And it's using the new Berry Blossoms designer series paper from Stampin' Up. So yeah, there's all my cards. Some of them are pretty crappy, but uh, it's nice to have a bunch of cards downstairs that you can dip into. And then these are mostly envelopes and card liners and some card blanks and that sort of thing. Down here I have photos. And in here I have a bunch of kind of tools and deco scissors and stuff. And that is my scrap room. I think I'm done. 37 minutes. Wow. That was a long explanation, but here it is. So thanks for joining me in my scrap room tour. Um, I hope that uh, you learned some ideas for organizing or, you know, using what you have. I, besides the Jetmax, I don't spend a whole lot of money on storage. Um, and even the Jetmax, I always get them on sale and stuff. So. Uh, if you happen to have a use for either metallic or glitter die cuts with a view cardstock, um, leave me a comment and um, I will gladly send these along to somebody who will use them. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.